Report of Major General Lafayette and Claus, C. S. Army, Commanding Division, 1st Army Corps. Headquarters Division, May 10, 1863. On May 1, instant, at 12.30 o'clock at night, the brigades of Generals Kershaw, Semmes, and Wofford were put in march up the plank road by orders from your headquarters, the brigade of General Barksdale remaining in Fredericksburg and vicinity, and by 6 o'clock in the morning were in position behind the rifle pits about Smith's Hill, and extending to the right and left, joining General Anderson's command on the left, to defend the approaches from the United States Ford and from the direction of Chancellorsville. About 11 a.m. General Jackson, who had arrived with his forces and assumed command, directed me to advance along the Turnpike Road, having Mahan's brigade, of Anderson's division, in advance. I collected my own division as rapidly as possible from the rifle pits, each brigade as it was relieved falling in rear of the others as they advanced in the march. After proceeding but a short distance, the skirmishers became engaged. The main column, advancing slowly until the enemy appeared in force, was deployed, and the line of battle formed across the turnpike road, Sem's brigade on the left and those of Mahan, Wofford, and Perry, of Anderson's division, in the order here named to the right, extending so as to cover the mine road, Tyler C., Jordan's battery on the main turnpike. Our skirmishers were driven in. Fire was opened on our lines from a battery 400 or 500 years in front, and, after skirmishing to the right and left, the main assault was made on the left, Sem's by Sykes regulars, but they were repulsed at every attempt. Before the first assault, I sent word to General Jackson, by my aide-de-camp, that the enemy were in force in my immediate front, and were advancing, and that a large force could be seen along the heights about one mile or more to the rear, and that the country was favorable for a flank attack from his side. After the first assault, I received answer from General Jackson to hold my position, and that he would advance, or was advancing, his artillery and if that did not answer he would endeavor to gain the rear of the enemy. General Kershaw coming up, his brigade was placed in support of General Semmes, extending beyond his left. The cavalry reporting that the enemy were advancing along the mine road, General Wilcox's brigade was ordered and took position, guided by Captain S. R. Johnstone, of General Lee's staff, to protect my right, taking artillery with him. General Jackson's artillery and his advance in conjunction with the failure of the attack on my front, forced the enemy to retire, when, by General Jackson's order, my whole line advanced in the same order as they had been displayed as above stated. The order to advance was received at 4 p.m. My line halted at dark, and bivouacked along the heights just beyond the point where the mine run crosses the turnpike. The next morning, the second, my line of battle was reformed along the heights in the same order as before, excepting that General Wilcox had been ordered during the night previous to return to Banks Ford and hold that position, it having been reported that the enemy were moving down the river road, and, besides, were making demonstrations to cross river at that ford. Two batteries were placed on the heights between General Semmes and Wofford. A strong line of skirmishers was advanced, and were constantly engaged with those of the enemy, General Kershaw's brigade held in reserve. I received orders from General Lee to hold my position, as General Jackson would operate to the left and rear. Not long after, I was directed to replace General Posey's brigade, on my left, by one from my command, and General Kershaw moved to that position on the left of General Sims. Following this order, I was directed to send the brigades of Generals Mahan and Perry to the left, and close in my command so as to connect with General Anderson's right, holding my right at the turnpike but constantly pressing to the left, so as to be in communication with General Anderson, to do which, as the country was broken and densely wooded, and the direction constantly changing, I ordered the two brigades on the left, Kershaw's and Sam's, to advance by battalion from the left, so as to form a broken line, but still covering the front and forming the connection. The batteries opened whenever the masses of the enemy on the hills in my front offered an opportunity, and with marked results. My orders were to hold my position, not to engage seriously, but to press strongly so soon as it was discovered that General Jackson had attacked. It was not until late in the evening that it was known General Jackson had commenced his assault, when I ordered in advance along the whole line to engage with the skirmishers, which were largely reinforced, and to threaten, but not attack seriously, in doing which General Wofford became so seriously engaged that I directed him to withdraw, which was done in good order, his men in good spirits, after driving the enemy to their entrenchments. 
As General Jackson advanced, the enemy massed in front of the batteries on my line, which opened on them with excellent effect. This continued until darkness prevented any further efforts in my front. Generals Kershaw and Semmes had been pressing to the left and front and engaging the enemy with their skirmishers, which had left an open space, so far as the main body was concerned, between my right and center of considerable distance, but the skirmishers of General Semmes, composed of the entire 10th Georgia Regiment, were perfectly reliable, and kept the enemy to their entrenchments, so there was nothing to be apprehended from an advance in this direction. May 3rd. Nothing occurred during the night save the magnificent display caused by the night attack of General Jackson. My skirmishers, well to the front and strong in numbers, engaged the enemy as day advanced. The batteries were run forward, and played upon the masses of the enemy, in good range, producing much confusion. Finally the repeated attacks of the forces on my left forced the enemy to give way from Chancellorsville, and our troops could be seen advancing across the plains. General Wofford threw a portion of his command across the valley between him and the Chancellorsville Heights, and thus prevented the escape of a considerable body of the enemy which had been opposed to his brigade and to his left and front during the morning. I directed a flag of truce to be sent them, and they surrendered. I think that General Wofford is entitled to the most credit for their capture, although the 10th Georgia, General Semmes, and General Wright, of Anderson's division, claimed their share equally. Kershaw and Semmes bearing up to the left to cooperate with General Anderson, to unite with the two wings of the army, had now swept around to the plains of Chancellorsville, and I directed them to march down the plank road and unite with General Wofford's left. As this was in the act of accomplishment, information was received that the enemy had carried the same direction with the remainder of my division, which was done so soon as the brigades could be formed. On reaching the rifle pits just beyond the junction of the turnpike and mine roads, I formed General Mahan's brigade along the rifle pits, General Kershaw's halted along the road, General Wilcox's brigades was marching to the front. I ordered them all forward, but as I was here informed that the enemy in considerable force were going down the telegraph road, and as I thought that it was perhaps their intention to march forward by the plank and mine roads, which came together just beyond the junction of the plank and turnpike roads, now in my rear, I halted General Wofford with directions to watch the mine road on his right. I then rode on, and found General Wilcox with his brigade in line across the plank road at Salem Church, General Kershaw forming on his right and General Mahan on the left. I directed General Mahan still more to his left, as he was acquainted with the country, and placed General Semmes to the immediate left of General Wilcox. General Wofford was ordered forward and placed on the right of General Kershaw. The batteries which I had brought with me had been engaged all the morning and had but little ammunition left. They had been ordered back in such haste that there was no time for them to replenish their chests, but they engaged the enemy until their supplies were nearly exhausted, and then withdrew, and were posted in the rear to command the ground on the flanks in front. The number of killed, wounded, and missing in my division, is as follows, Kershaw's Brigade, 104, of which two are missing, Barksdale's Brigade, 592, of which 341 are missing, besides 14 officers, Sem's Brigade, 603, of which 26 are missing, Wofford's Brigade, 562, of which 9 are missing, Artillery, 28, of which 2 are missing. Total, 1,889. My Inspector General reports over 1,200 prisoners taken. Very respectfully. L. M. C. Laws. Major General.